All this for Rachel. <laughs> okay, so this is lesson 62, number 20. You gotta complete the square and graph my parabola. So shouldn't I? Is that the right one that you want, wanted? No, I don't think so. So nobody wanted number 20? I did it again? <laughs> oh, I did it again. Oh, okay, number 20, that's why you said it would be fast. Okay, well, I'm going to leave the... So this is lesson 62, number 20. Hey, is that right? Is it that the one that you wanted? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, write... I don't know, I keep trying to do lesson 63. Write the equation of the following sinusoids in terms of cosine. So this thing, I'm going to compare it to cosine, and I hope that you guys know what cosine looks like now. To me, cosine is just a smiley face, just like that. It's just a smiley face. Okay? Um, so I don't think there's been a, a phase shift. I can see that it didn't, you know, like they're both going right, the high point, to the max is on the y-axis. Um, so this is how it goes. It's going to go midline, <coughs> amplitude, period, and phase shift. It's spelled map. Um, the midline is, let's see what it is. Did you figure it out? 10. I think it's like negative 3. Whose problem is this? Yours. Okay, so the midline, I'm trying to, I'm going to put the midline here, then I'm going to put the amplitude, then the period, then the phase shift. I already figured out, I don't think there's a phase shift, because see how it's go, the top's going right through the y-axis like it should? So there's no phase shift. Um, I have to write it as cosine, so it's going to be cosine, um, and there's no phase shift, so it's going to be cosine x, I guess, because see how that's x right there. Um, I want the midline. So I go to the distance between 2 and negative 8 is actually going to be 10, the absolute mm -hmm. value of it. So that means that the amplitude is half of that, 5. The amplitude is 5, so you're going to get a 5. Um, wait a second. Here, let's, let's fix this up. 5, cosine, and then if there is something with the period, we'll put it right there, and then we'll put the x. Okay, we might put a number right there. Oh, we right. Sorry, we might put a number right there for the period, or we might not. Maybe. But we know the amplitude is 5. And so what does that make the midline be? If it's if that's uh, 2, and you subtract 5? 3. I'm getting negative 3. Yeah. And if you look from the bottom, and it's 8, and you go up by 5, that'll get you there, too. That's negative 3. So y equals negative 3 plus 5 because it, it hasn't been flipped upside down or anything. It would be minus it w if it had like reflected over the axis. Okay, so, oh, you can't see that and see the picture at the same time, huh? <laughs> um, I want the period. I'm going to find the period by going... Here, let's fold this so you can see. The period is... I'm going to look at this and I'm going to ask myself, how, or no, let's not even ask that question anymore. Let's just go like this. Period can be found by 2 pi divided by what the period, you know, the changed period is. So the changed period is 6 pi. So that's actually going to be 1 fourth. Wait. 1 third. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So I used to say, I used to say, well, one third of those will fit in the in you know a regular interval of two pi, but that's kind of I think that's more confusing than just saying take the normal um, period of the parent function and divide it by the period that appears in the translated function, and that's the answer right there. Okay. Okay, that was number. Uh, now I lost it already. So I keep getting lost. That was number twenty. So number twenty is off our list. Let's go on to 22. Four more problems. Close it, close it, close it. Where does it go?